everybody. Dr. Joel Parker with this week's version of Whiteboard Wednesdays coming live from VPS. Um, very interesting, running into all kinds of people that we meet at these trade shows. Like you're just at the Western Conference. Really wonderful. I love talking with veterinarians because, you know, I have 17 years in private practice and there were times where I've, you know, gone through exactly what you guys go through. I've practically seen everything. You never see everything, but you know what I mean. I've seen a lot of stuff in those 17 years. And one of the things that, you know, I used to notice that when things weren't going well in my practice, I wouldn't want to go in. I'd rather go and just drive right by and go windsurfing or golfing or do something completely different. So this week's topic is called Thinking About a Practice Drive-By. And I got, I got talking with a, um, an attendee at the Western Vet Conference a couple weeks back in Vegas, and he came up and he, he, he used to actually do practice drive-bys. His practice before he bought it was so toxic that he would actually drive by the practice and just see what it felt like. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. But you know, behind everything that's funny, there's a little bit of seriousness. Okay, and the bottom line is, if you're feeling that you don't want to go into your practice, either as a manager or as an owner, then something's not right. Now, I'm not saying that a practice should run perfectly every single day of the week, but it should be a, a safe place that you go. It should be what I refer to as a bastion of sanity. It should be highly organized. It should be staffed with really great people, and you guys should be having fun when you go there. Okay, It should be a, a, a place that you want to go. So the fact that you're thinking about driving by, or even in the case of the gentleman I met, he actually practiced driving by, you know, there's something wrong there. Okay. Now, here's what's going on here. You know, The question is, who in the practice is toxic? When you're, when you're feeling like doing a drive-by, it's not something that is wrong in the practice, it's someone that is a wrong fit for the practice. I want you guys to remember that. You know, sure it could be a piece of x-ray equipment that's not working properly, or sure, you know, maybe the uh, large packs are mixed in with a, a small surgical packs and you don't have towel clamps or something like that. Sure, you can have some little things like that, but the bottom line is the stuff that causes the real stress in a practice and causes you and I to not want to go in is a someone, you know, so who in the practice is toxic? And I think that if you ask Ask yourself that question and if you get together with your managers you guys will have an answer like that this is not something that is rarely anything that nobody's thought about it is a person that has been with your practice either a short or long period of time that is just the wrong fit and they can also be very very toxic so the signs that you've got these things going on in your practice you've got this person in your practice that shouldn't be there is number one you don't feel like going in and number two you can get caught up in some gossip and some natter natter means negative chatter you can get Get caught up in gossip and negative chatter with another staff member about this person and the bottom line is someone's going to have to go so we're going to come right down here to decision time who in the practice is toxic so a confront communicate and handle I want you guys to treat people like you like to be treated yourself with good open communication. The, the golden rule of do things unto others as you'd like done to yourself applies here. So when you go to talk to a, a person that you're suspected or you feel is toxic, treat them with some, spec, they, they, with some respect. They are another human being. They are emotional. Things you can say will hurt them. But the bottom line is I do want you to go confront them. Definition of confront means your ability and your presence to be there comfortably and to handle without avoiding or flinching. So the fact that you're doing a drive-by or attempting a drive-by or the fact that you're talking about a staff member with another person is actually a lack of confront. You're actually not confronting what's going on. Okay, so you need to go and confront, book an appointment with that person, and communicate very carefully with them and handle and either solve the problem that is going on in the practice, okay, or you need to then slip down into step B here, and that is somebody has to go. And when I would finally go through these steps, when I would finally confront and communicate and attempt to handle a toxic staff person, and after two or three times of doing this, a couple correction cycles, all written down with signed uh, documents, signed warnings and things like that, you know the procedure, put things in writing, get them to sign it. And when I finally uh, uh, got to the point where they had to go, I'd sit down and I'd have the talk that one of us has to go and I'm the owner. And then they kind of, you could see the wheels, the gears start to turn and so forth, and then finally they get it. And I, I practice in the end, I would do all of this confronting before the 90 day probation, probation period expired. I will even do it now before 30 days is out, because 30 days, you know it, 30 days is long enough to know whether you've got a toxic person or not. Okay, so that's what you need to get done this week. You know the feeling, once you get it done, you're going to feel a lot better, but at least start the process with sitting down and confronting, communicating, and handling, attempting to handle, get some written write-ups that they sign off, some written warnings, 
And then after you've done one or two of those and you can step into the next phase is where somebody has to go and I'm the owner or I'm the manager, one of those. Okay guys, so get that done. The sooner you do it, the better. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off. The sooner you confront that person, you're gonna feel better. And some of these people, you know, we run into practices that have been there for 30 years. They started the practice with you. So they can be difficult, but I want you to start the steps of confronting and communicating with and handling. Okay, that's all we got for you. If you get that done, you're gonna feel better. <laughs> You'll actually stop the drive-bys and actually drive into the parking lot with a smile on your face and uh, join your team for a great day of veterinary medicine. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next week. That's all I got for you. See you then.